All right, welcome back to Math Y200. This is chapter five, part three. I hope I get that right, it's hard to remember. All right, um, we were talking about colors and all the design properties. Again, this chapter is heavily about design and it's kind of a little bit abstract, but it's still worthwhile, very, very, very worthwhile. It's entirely unacceptable to design a web page without design. Um, kind of doesn't make sense either. Um, when you're using graphics and other multimedia in your page uh, or site, keep in mind the file size, which is usually related to dimensions of the image or video or whatever. That makes a big difference. File size matters. Even these days with high-speed internet, file size matter. If your website is too big, web, yeah, is web too, is too big, it's frustrating for the user and you'll lose them and you don't want that that's the whole point of designing web pages so that other people will look at them right um have good navigation um we'll talk about anti-alias versus alias text um and alt text we've talked about a lot but we'll get into that again more and don't have extraneous multimedia don't be, go crazy with this so um again file size don't get crazy with this. Keep your, your website entirely. All the files, all the images, all the HTML, all the CSS, everything, which HTML and CSS is pretty small in uh, consideration. All of that should be no more than a meg or two or three megs big. Because if you're on a mobile device and you're trying to download all that stuff, it makes a big difference. If you're on a low-speed internet, it makes a big difference. Even if you're on high-speed internet, it can be really annoying to go to a page and it just has all those flashy bells and whistles and you just want the content. You don't want to be distracted by that. You don't want to wait for that to be downloaded either. So um, always use alt when you're using um, uh, um, images or even movies. Don't embed movies, please. Um, don't embed music either. Please, please don't have a web page that comes up and plays music. That's terrible design. It's annoying. I like music. I like hearing things, but that's annoying. Um, uh, animation is also right out. Just, just don't do it unless you really have to, but don't. Um, and again, most of the time you can avoid animation just by not and doing it. Uh, a lot of times you have to explicitly go out of your way to do, uh, set up animation, but just just get out of there. Just don't do it. Um, yeah, so make sure that it doesn't require the images to get your um, your message across. That is a very good point that, you know, your, your message should be obvious, should be clear, and should be text-based. Okay, not image-based or flash-based. I hate flash websites, mostly because half of the devices out there with Apple devices and iOS devices don't use flash. And I'm not a huge fan of Apple for, for that for many reasons, and this being one of them. But the fact that it doesn't use flash and the fact that some websites use flash and they're terrible, it makes just don't do flash. We don't I don't United teaching you that. So um so uh, again, there's no color requirements for choices, but you want to make sure that your web palette is nice. Uh, it, it's nice to choose from palettes that are available on older Macs and PCs, but frankly, it's not so much important these days because you can basically assume almost any modern or even semi-modern computer has millions of colors available to it. If it doesn't, you can't accommodate everybody. Uh, this is a big one, alias, anti-alias versus um, alias text. Uh, this used to be a lot bigger of an issue. Less, now with Windows 10 and the latest Mac OS, I believe it's less of an issue. But uh, So there's a difference between alias and anti-alias, and we like anti-alias. And by previous to modern browsers, you know, current modern browsers, most text was anti-alias because it was cheaper, or no, it was alias. And it was cheaper and quicker and easier to do. So let me talk what that is. Um, alias is this. So if you see, the L is pretty straightforward. It's just a block. Same with the I. But if you look carefully at the A's right here, or the S, or the E, th there's a bit of granularity to the uh, outside of the image. The black is fine, but you kind of don't have grays here. You have just black, you know, not black, black, not black, you know, all this stuff, and it's very um, uh, jagged. That's a good word for it. Whereas anti-alias kind of smooths over the edges. There's reasons in old type setting about the difference between why it's called alias and anti-alias. I'm not going to go into all that stuff. It's not important. 
you can actually set, again, this has not been common on previous browsers, and I believe more modern browsers have this and are, show it in alias, because um, it used to be the default for any web, for any computer in Windows. Windows XP for sure wasn't a default by it. it could do anti-alias, but it didn't default to it. I believe Windows 7 and on, uh, by default, you set alias or set it to anti-alias instead of alias for everything. Um, so most of the time you don't have to specify that, but if you do have to specify it per browser, this is how you do it because, again, this is not generally commonly uh, uh, set up in HTML5. Uh, later versions, I'm sure, will by default want to set everything as uh, anti-alias. If the trend is going anti-alias, this is more expensive and time-consuming to do. So one way around this, if you want to force it to be that way, is put your text into a picture and embed the picture into your page. But you want to avoid that. That's only really good for like logos for your company or something like that. Definitely use anti-alias text when you're doing that. Um, but try not to have text and images if at all possible, far, partially because it's really hard to change that. If the company slightly changes their name or wants the uh, different font or something like that, you have to recreate the image entirely. Whereas if you can somehow just do it as a uh, text, it's not that hard to change things around. Um, when you're using images, you know, be con don't don't throw everything out there. You don't have, when you're designing a page, keep it simple. Uh, that that's what it comes down to. Um, small images, reuse images, and don't be extraneous with all of extra you know crazy images that you don't need. Um, you know when you're Considering this, these are uh, different web pages. If a big pay, if a website is you know that big, it, it just it, it takes a long time. Just limit the size of your content, your h, your uh, images, your movies if you have any, which you really shouldn't have too much in the way of movies for your web page websites. Um, any other associated media, keep it simple. Under 60K for the first page, under 60K for the next page, and so on and so on, and a total of no more than a couple megs. Okay, 60K is 60,000. Three makes it three million bytes. And these, you know, 60K, a uh, thousand K is a, a approximately a megabyte. So, you know, a couple pages should be no more than it takes for a website or for, for up to three megs. So just keep it simple, keep it small. Um, I, I keep hashing on this, but you want to also test your design on multiple browsers. Don't assume that if it looks one way in Internet Explorer, it looks in the same way in Google Chrome, because guess what? It doesn't usually. And you might have to slightly modify and, and be able to, uh, uh, you know, make it look good in all things. Um, Safari, Chrome, Internet Explorer, those are the main ones out there. Firefox is less so, but it's still used very commonly. Test also at different resolutions. And we're going to talk about in the next chapter about how to scale it to different uh, and, and modify it so it looks different on different resolutions. So like it looked different, better on an iPhone and look good on an iPhone and also on a tablet and also on a uh, main page. Uh, but for now, just know that you want to test it, you know, good, commonly used resolutions, which there, there's a list of them right here. Um, 1024 by, or 1280 by 1024 is kind of the small screens that are out there. Um, I know my screen can go up to like 20, 000, or 2000 by 16 or what, I don't know what it is, but some really crazy resolution. Um, uh, so just check it out. Make sure it looks good. Make sure this it's kind of centered regardless of the, the real screen size and use fix or f a percentage widths um, and use em to make it so it looks good and uh, scales proportionally to whatever web page or, web or screen size you have em is your friend when it comes to that um, make it so it's obvious and easy to navigate um, make it so this again goes to basic design principles um, uh, have an obvious place for the navigation and you can do it multiple times it's not uncommon to have a top and a bottom or a side and a bottom or a top and a side there's nothing wrong with that and usually they will look significantly different and that's okay 
uh, but they should more or less look the same. Net breadcrumbs are very popular and very good. Navigation bars are wonderful, like this as a navigation bar. This right here is an example of a breadcrumb. I'm in, you know, this page within this page within this page within this page. So it kind of navigates you through the hierarchy. So it's stepping down the hierarchy, if you will. Um, and breadcrumbs help you kind of go back up the level or up two levels or up three levels and you can go uh, easily get there. Um, nice things to add are site maps. I actually use that more often than not these days to find uh, complicated websites uh, like the university's, Loyola University's website has a site navigation or site map down below and it's really helpful because there's times I'm like how do I get to calendars or how do I get to this or how do I get to that and it can be useful. Searches are great. We're not going to talk about how to do searches so much in this class but they can be really helpful and not too hard to put in there. Um, so yeah, there's some examples there. Um, uh, let's pause that and I'll come back and finish this up in the next section.